Don't trust any of those things. If you get to heaven today, they won't ask you, Oh, welcome, celestial member. Enter into heaven. No, no, no. Nothing like that. Even if you are the, super, the most superior evangelist on the earth, they won't welcome you that. No, 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 no. What are they going to look at? Boom, what's your name? So, 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 so. Please get the book. What, your first name? Your last name? So, so it. Huh? Uh, sorry, your name is not here. Eh? What do you mean? Uh, sorry, what's your name again? No, your name, you can't enter here. Eh? Am I not, I'm the shepherd. I had 10 churches when I was on the earth. I founded 10 churches. I prayed for people, they were delivered. I cast out demons. Somebody died, and I prayed for them, and they came to life. What do you mean I can't enter here? I'm sorry, sir, but your name is not in this book. That is what's going to happen. They won't say, ah, you're a celestial. Go in. There's nothing like that. <laughs> it's only this, I will know celestial. In heaven, there's no celestial. It is the work of your hands. That's all they care about. Whether you're celestial, Catholic, Anglican, Methodist, Baptist, it doesn't matter. Because all those things are of this earth. In heaven, what they look at is the work of your hands. What did you do on the earth? What did you not do? That is it. A balance, a scale, a measuring balance. If your wrongs are more than your ills, um, that's it. So that's what he says. Don't trust in lying words. So I go to such a church. They told me the last act of salvation. So I'm going to heaven. Eh? Who told you that? Don't believe that nonsense. What are you doing with your life? Is what comes. We can put on the whitest sutana. Even, I don't know how white it is. It doesn't matter. When they see you in the spirit, they don't see your sutana. They see your life. What kind of life are you leading? You know, there are many people who wear sutanas, but are very wicked. There are many people in this church who wear sutanas who are witches and wizards. They wear amulets under their sutanas. They destroy people's lives. And they actually wear the sutanas over it. So don't be deceived by any sutana or somebody is this or somebody is that. It doesn't mean anything. Look at Jesus. He's your only example. He said, if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place. Please note, shed not innocent blood. What do you mean by that? Does it mean that, oh, you go and kill people with a knife? No. Yes, that's part of it. But there are many people who kill people without even raising up a knife. Oh, yes. There are many people who donate their mothers, their fathers, their children. They donate them in the secret courts. Why? So they can have money. They will come and laugh with them in the church, dance with them. Meanwhile, they donated them. You just hear that person die suddenly. Yeah. And they'll be the chief mourner crying in that burial. But they will know inside that I'm the one that killed this person. That's what it means to shed innocent blood. The person who didn't do anything for you, even maybe your best friend. You go and put his name, the secret courts. Yeah, you can have him. As long as I have my million dollars. As long as you do that, when you get to me five million dollars in your house. They start doing cheap this, cheap that. They make you a chief. They don't know how you cut that money. Neither walk after other gods to your heart. Please note, walk after other gods to your hearts. See, many of us, many people, not only in this church, in other churches, they come to church. But when they have a problem, they don't stay in the church. They go to the village. They go to one Baba somewhere there. Oh, I know one more about somewhere in the village. Let's go there. They don't come to the shepherd and say, Shepherd, I have a problem. No, 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 no. They know where they go. That's what it meant. To walk after other gods. When they get there, they say, Oh, this God, it demands blood. You have to bring this power. You have to bring this uh, lamb. You have to bring this. Uh, and next Sunday, they'll be in the church. If some of them in the altar. I'm telling the truth. That's, this is exactly what God is saying. In this place, walk after the gospel to your hearts. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6, verse 14. 
Deuteronomy 6 verse 14, and Deuteronomy 8 19. You see, there's nothing new under the earth. That's what the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes. If anything's happening, it's already happened before. It's already happened before. Go on. Deuteronomy 6.14. Yes. You shall not follow other gods. Yes. Any of the gods of the people mm -hmm. who surround you. Yes. For the Lord your God in the midst of you is mm -hmm. a jealous God. Yes. Otherwise, the anger of the Lord your God will be kindled against you. See? Go to 8.19. And it shall be. Uh -huh. You shall do as all forget the Lord thy God. Yes. And walk after other gods. Yeah. And serve them. Mm -hmm. And worship them. Yeah. And testify against you this day. Yeah. Uh -huh. That you shall surely perish. That's it. So okay. one of the things God hates most is idolatry, following other gods. Why? Because he says, I am a jealous God. God. I mean, God himself said, I didn't say it. God said, I am a jealous God. Why is God a jealous God? Because you know, we human beings, like if you're married to somebody now, and that person is fooling around, you become jealous, right? That's we human beings. But God loves us even more than we love each other. You can say, oh, I like this boy, I like this woman, it's my wife, whatever. But God loves that person more than you, her husband, or his wife, whatever. So, if you can be jealous, how much more God? That's why he says, I'm a jealous God. I cannot tolerate you going to other gods. God looks, when you do that, it's like if somebody is married to somebody and goes out on an affair. That's because God looks at this. If we as children go to other gods and say, oh, uh, we're in trouble, and I say, well, if you want this God to help you, you have to do this, you have to do that. God looks at this as adultery. It's as if he married you and you went and had an affair outside. That's we could see it. Very serious. I once knew a prophet who was told the message. I was there when he was given the message that for five years he suffered a lot. In fact, one time in, it was in America, they shot him, he nearly died. Oh. And this person was telling her, look, the reason you've gone through so much of five years is because before you came to America, you went to consult from a Baba somewhere. Oh. said, did you not trust me? Is that why you left me to go and consult? So that is why you've experienced all this pain for five years. Can you imagine? For five years he suffered simply because of that singular act. Say, I'm going to America, oh, let me go for protection, let me go for this babana. But you are a prophet. What are you going to do with a uh, herbalist uh, uh, or a uh, imam or whatever? You know, I was there when he was seeing that message. So God hates it. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 16, Psalm 16. verse 4. Psalm 16, verse 4. There are sorrows shall be multiplied. Uh -huh. That hasten after another God. That is it. Their sorrows have been multiplied. That hasten after That means that it's your own hearts. When you choose to go and ask help or seek <laughs> help or get protection from another God, is you are doing yourself harm and damage. You are not doing it to God. It's you. You are really destroying yourself. Okay? Then. He continued, he said, Neither walk after God to your heart, then will I cause you to dwell in this place. Now, if you don't do all those things, then you can stay in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. So, when God blesses you, some people make the mistake. When God has blessed them, they've followed God for many years, and then at last, God blesses them, they become wealthy, or they buy a house, or whatever. And once they get there, now they are comfortable, they relax. God said, oh, do I really have to go to church today? I feel like I enjoyed last night. Isn't this too much? This is too much prayer. Hmm. You've forgotten where you were coming from. You've forgotten where you came from when you didn't have anything. Now you have everything. You are now questioning whether you should pray to God. I, I do have to fast every day. That's what the, your friends will be telling you. Now you're in the big club now. On Sunday morning, they want to have a meeting call you and make you the chairman. Say, come and speak to us. Ah, me? But I go to, ah, ah. Say, do you, ah, I can't say anybody else. Are you the only one in the church? 